Good morning. My name is Dr. Felice Cellini and I'm blessed and grateful to be in recovery. And this is our Why Wait for Recovery Sunday morning community week, uh, meeting. Welcome. Welcome everybody. I'm glad that everybody's here this morning. So this morning we're going to talk about holidays and binging and recovery and all of that stuff that we talk about anyway. Um, and, and actually, we're going to find that as far as binging and feeling kind of sorry for ourselves that we're not using, funny, right? We feel sorry for ourselves because we've stopped punishing ourselves. Um, feeling sorry for ourselves that we're not using, it comes around more on the holidays just because we're around so many other people that are using. And so uh, we'll talk about the difference and how that difference feels and how in time, not that that, you know, feeling the ouch is gonna completely go away, but that it's gonna get um, some easier. I wanna give a shout out to Haiti this morning. Haiti, we love you. We're sorry that you're not here. We're super sorry for your loss. We're all sending you hugs and loves and uh, gratitude for who you are and um, sympathy for where you are. So good morning, baby. Hope that you're with us this morning. And so um, we're gonna start, I I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna speak a whole lot on my own today. So you guys all know this is our Why Wait for Recovery meeting. We talk about recovery. We have a couple of seconds to talk about our challenges and lots and lots of time to talk about the solution. And so we're gonna step into the solution this morning. Um, we do, I guess we should talk about Why Wait for Recovery. We do workshops, we do free meetings, we do workshops. Our next workshop is going to be Angeli. I don't know, does anybody know when the next workshop is? I think January 6th. Oh. No, our, that's our next, yeah, seven-week workshop. Oh, and so our next two-hour workshop is on December um, 20th, and then following that, we also have one on the 27th. And the 20th is a Thursday or a Saturday? Correct, the 20th is a Thursday. Okay, awesome. So the 20th is a Thursday. So come sit, you guys. Um, 20th is a Thursday, and that's going to be a two-hour uh, workshop, and those are two-hour intensive workshops. And um, all of the information for that is on the website. And if not, you could always, if, if you can't find your way around the website, just go ahead and I am um, Ange or me or Haiti or Bonnie or somebody, and I uh, will give you that information. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, you guys. Hi, nice to see morning. you here this morning. All right, so I'm gonna start. We're gonna go around the room um, and we'll talk about quickly if there's anything going on anybody needs their 15 seconds worth of um, complaining <laughs> so that we could spend our 15 minutes or hours or years or whatever um, stepping into the solution so good morning Laura I'm gonna pick on you first this morning Hi. good to see you baby unmute yourself we so we can't, can't hear Laura so is this on I feel Laura can you hear me yes Perfect. we can good morning Okay, so, um, yeah, there's like, so, okay, so <laughs> let's throw it out there. I was just mentioning that um, I'm definitely having issues with body dysmorphia. Okay. That's definitely what's up with me. Okay. So um, I'm feeling very, very, it's like, you know, I've lost almost 70 pounds, mm -hmm. and I don't feel like I've lost anything. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. And uh, yeah, that's what, I was, that's what I got. So I, I'm not gonna say too much about that and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know if there's anybody who's anorexic or a binger um, that doesn't have a problem with that. Does that mm -hmm. make yours easier? No, <laughs> it doesn't. And, and I've talked about this before, Angela and I shop together, right? And how many times I hold something up and I'm like, is this my size? And again, you guys laugh at me about the bathtub thing. But when I, when I said that, and actually, I don't know why I took that so personally and let it hurt my feelings, which obviously I did because I mention it often. But where I say, you know, I wake up in the morning and I can't believe that, I, that I'm actually going to fit in the bathtub because I mm -hmm. like to take baths. And you guys all, you know, laughed at me and Angela goofs on me about it. But that's the truth, man. Like, I have no idea. And so that's okay. So acceptance is the answer to all of my challenges today. Whether I'm talking about my addiction or I'm talking about my crazy, right? And so I'm going to accept the fact that I might not be sure if I'm ever going to fit into my bathtub. And then if I eat something the day before that, was, uh, that had a lot of calories in it and the next morning I'm sure I'm not going to fit into my clothes. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm 5'6", I weigh 120 pounds. So yeah. I know realistically, and I'm gonna tell you something that one of my therapists told me to do that was very, very helpful. She said, Felice, when you feel like you're morbidly obese at your size, 
I want you to take a pair of your jeans out of the dryer and look at them, right? And let your brain know that you're the person that fits into this size pants. Okay. So emotionally, anyone who starved themselves knows emotionally that um, we do have a problem with our body image. Okay, so that is what it is. Again, does it make it any, any easier or any different? No, it doesn't. Is it gonna change? I'm not sure. I've been in and out of therapy. I'm old, and I've been in lots and lots of therapy, and I've lived in treatment centers, and um, I don't know. There are some things that I've learned that I'm gonna accept the fact that this is part of my brain, how I see things, who I am, and then I'm gonna let it go. And I'm gonna say to myself, okay, Felice, this is you being a little nutty this morning. And so that's okay, and let it go. Because the more that I think about it, the more it adds to my fear, okay. right? And so we're gonna remember, you guys, that any negative feeling that we have is fear-based. So what's the fear? We know that you've lost 70 pounds, which is awesome, right? That is a weight thing, it's not a recovery thing. Right, that's a weight thing. Because of your recovery, you can stay abstinent, right? Because of our recovery, I ain't eaten a handful of Percocets this morning. Yeah. Right? And so that part's the good part. The part about our body image, I'm not sure how much work um, we get or how much money we can even spend taking care of that. That's actually going to change our brain. I think that, you know how, if I, when I was growing up, if somebody told me, that this color was light blue, and I grew up believing that this was light blue, at some point when somebody told me and, and said for sure it's a fact that this is black, I'm gonna have to accept the fact that it is, even though I've learned that it's light blue. Mm -hmm. And so it might just ease, be easier to have that as a thing of acceptance. Yeah. Right, okay. you guys know I don't do clinical psychology, right? My PhD is in positive psychology and I practice medicine. So as far as um, if there's anybody out there with a psych degree that could help me out with that, a different psych degree than I have, that could help me out with it, that would be great. And Laura, I'll actually look up uh, more information and uh, post it, or you'll call me if I can great. find anything. I am gonna say that I'm sorry you're going through it because it sucks. Yeah. It does, it just sucks. It's like, man, like I've done this much work and this is where I am. How's your recovery? My recovery's good. Okay. Yeah, my recovery's good. It really is. No, no, no. Not too much craving and not too much. I really wish I could be high right now. Oh, I always wish that I, I mean, I always wish you, right, that I could be like, you know, taking pills. <laughs> like, I always wish. But uh, no, We're no, so awesome. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but, and when yeah. you say always, so here's the thing too that I want to bring up because we, you and I goof with each other. And yeah. so when we say, you know, yeah, we always wish that we could be high, it's really not a always wish that we could be high, right? It's a wow. If I, you know, if we could have done what we did and not have had a problem with it, then we wouldn't be at a friggin' recovery meeting Sunday morning True. at 9.30 in the morning, right? <laughs> We'd be at Costco or out <laughs> shopping with the other Christmas folks or walking on the beach or something. And so do we always wish we were high? Well, not really. Right. I mean, Laura's like, just look to the left. Like, yeah, I maybe mean, you do still. And that, I really do, actually. So, like, yeah, fair enough. But, but not high when we play the tape through. Right. Right. Not high when we realize that getting high brought us to where we were, which was a really yeah. ugly, horrible place. So do yeah. we wish that we could be like normal people who do a couple of shots of tequila once in a while? Right, those people that we really don't like that much. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> those people that could do that, that sometimes we have an ouch about those people. Yeah. Because I know sometimes I have an ouch about those people. More importantly, I think, is that I resent myself because I'm not that person. Yeah. Right? Little bit of resentment for the person, lots of resentment for me. I was um I was talking with you guys know that um that my boyfriend is twenty four years clean. And um, we were talking about somebody that we both know who's in active addiction right now. And I'm sitting in my car having a conversation. I'm like, how can I be an addict? Like, how can I be an addict? You know, I have all these letters after my name and I'm really cool and I'm nice and I'm kind and I do my best to do my best and I do a lot of service. And how can I be an addict? You know? I tried to get a mortgage the other day, and because of my relapse three years ago, my, uh, my history this, this year, you know, financially I'm okay, 
the year that I relapsed, I definitely wasn't okay. I made hardly any money. And it's like, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm such a piece of shit drug addict. And he's like, you're not a piece of shit. And I'm like, okay, when I'm in active addiction, what am I? I don't know how else to look at it. You know, no, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm somebody with a disease that uh, after seven and a half years relapsed. How does that happen? Right? I know how it happened for me. I ate the pills. But <laughs> how did it happen, like, before I ate the pills? Um, so, yeah, so maybe we do wish that we could use, but we know that the, and, and by the way, we can. Right, you guys, we could do whatever we want to do. So not using today as a choice that we're going to make because tomorrow looks a lot prettier when I didn't use today. Yeah. And as far as the body image goes, is there anybody here that has a problem binging, purging, or that's anorexic um, that has a problem with their body image? Yeah, and so everybody's got their hand up. So again, does that make your head, what's happening in your head easier? No, it doesn't. I'm just letting you know that maybe that's gonna be one of those, it is what it is, and we're gonna accept the fact that that's the way that it is. And when you're having a challenge about it, do what my therapist said. Take your jeans out of the dryer and look at them. You know, and say, okay, this is where I am. And that's where I was. So something's happening good, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. I miss you. Miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that Christine? Mm -hmm. Christine, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I don't, it's Sunday morning, so it's, you know, it's kind of early still or whatever, but... Okay, so is um, there anything that you'd like to share with us this morning? You got your 15 seconds. Yeah, I always have a problem with that because I never know what to say. <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Remember when we talk about ego, right? We say ego is what I think Bonnie's opinion of me is. Right now, what Bonnie's opinion of ever, what Bonnie's opinion of me doesn't matter. Whatever I say here this morning, I'm not going to say to change your mind or to change her mind or to change Ahmed's mind. I'm just going to say whatever happens in my head. Speak, baby. You got 15 seconds. Uh, say something. Yeah, so I think the thing that I, uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to Anjali and Liz for um, for being able to reach out and reach back. I appreciate that. It's, it's difficult. Uh, and um, I guess part of what I, I understand, what um, I understand what Karen was talking about, um, and I struggle with uh, my anorexia every day. Okay. All right. And um, it's, it's a tough go. I'm working on it. Yeah, and so you are working on it. And so that's the thing. So, um, again, you know, people die of anorexia, right? And um, yeah. so that's because it's a, it's a real challenge. And so the fact that you're working on it is the important part. I know that um, a lot of us see therapists, so... I know that you're working with whoever you're working with, and I know that you're talking about recovery on Why Wait for Recovery, because I see you post. I posted something for you yesterday, actually, late last night. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's something that we're going to work on every day, right? We're going to yeah. do our best to do our best, abstinence-wise, from our drug of choice, whether it's pills, drugs, alcohol, starving ourselves, binging, purging, whatever. We're gonna stay abstinent because we have to stay abstinent to get some recovery. And once we're in recovery, we'll be able to stay abstinent. And so I think yeah. yes, I think one of the things that I get stuck with, and I mentioned um, I mentioned this uh, to a couple of people was, I know that you say that if we're watching the if we're watching this and we belong, but sometimes I feel like I don't belong because it's not as easy as just stopping and it. You know what I'm talking about. It's not as easy as just not picking up or whatever. It's 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 very complicated. It's so here, layered. It's, here, here's the you know. thing: addiction is addiction is addiction. Anorexia mm -hmm. isn't worse than shooting up, and it's not better than shooting up. Same shit, different substance, right? If I'm starving myself because it's a control thing, it's changing my brain chemistry. Um, the answer is still going to be perspective and acceptance. It's still going to be the way that I look at the world. 
I'm going to change the way that I look at the world. I'm going to have acceptance for the things that are happening around me that I have no control over. Right? I'm going to change my perspective. I'm going to learn to be grateful and look at the things that I do have that's happening that's amazing in my life instead of what I don't have. I'm going to come from a place of abundance instead of a place of lack. That stuff across the board is recovery stuff. There's nothing with yours. Listen, we can all argue that it's a whole lot easier to eat than it is to stop eating a handful of Percocet every hour. We could have that argument, but there's no place for it. Do I think that one's easier or harder or better than the other? I don't, and I'm never going to, and I'm lots of those. <laughs> so just for me, I know that the challenge may be different, but it's under this umbrella, and the solution is the same. The solution is the solution. Thank you. Okay, baby. And, and thanks for sharing today, because that was a big step for you. So I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. It was awesome to hear your voice. Thank you. And keep reaching out, okay? Thank you very, very much. Of course. Jess, I'm thank just going to say that we love you. It's good to see your face. I know you're somewhere thanks. where you can't talk. And um, good to see you. I think we're having an internet problem, you guys. Are we having an internet problem, my man? Okay. All right, Karen, can you talk? Well, you can talk. Karen, can you share? So I think Karen's frozen. Liz, are you frozen? Okay, yes, so. Yes, can you hear me? She's yes, frozen. you just said yes. Karen. Okay. We can hear you, just frozen. Yeah, it's okay. Karen, <laughs> can you, you want me? to share? Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, these meetings keep me keep me grounded. I'm, I'm in the midst of chaos, which is, <laughs> is good in a, in a sense there's a lot of good things going on but also sometimes you know things don't work out quite the way you had hoped and and it's a lot easier to just let that go and and take another path and and look for something else we almost put a piano in the dumpster yesterday but we actually found somebody who took it awesome. last night so that was good and the people who were going to take it originally backed out so anyway it was like oh dear we don't want to be stuck with this piano and we you know we thought about the dumpster but Anyway, it worked out, and it just was easy to let that go and, and uh, not worry about it and figure it'll, it'll happen or, what, or it won't, whatever. So, yeah, I, I, I come to these meetings no matter what's going on because it, it's, help, it's important for me. So um, one of Karen's addictions is that <laughs> she's addicted <laughs> to that chaos, right? Uh, and, so, and so, my dear friend, there's life happening around you. There's not chaos yes. happening around us unless we label it as chaos. That's what I'm doing. You're moving. There's stuff that has to be done. There's stuff that you're choosing to do. It's all a big time choice, right? And it's scary yeah. Yeah. and you're scared. And so I'm looking yeah. at yourself and saying, wow, I'm going to make this really big change and I'm scared. I'm going to take a breath, reach out for help, which is what you do. The piano isn't chaos it's a piano <laughs> okay you're right right yeah, I, I actually did that yeah you're yeah. right absolutely. baby yes. ha having a heart attack is chaotic having a piano <laughs> doesn't have to be right 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 acceptance is the answer to all of my challenges today it's what it says in the big yeah. book of alcoholics anonymous yeah. right okay got a piano might have to throw it in the dumpster maybe somebody will take it so we're going to do our best. To, and you guys, just because we do our best to do our best doesn't mean that the universe is going to cooperate and uh, pat us on the back for it, right? Yeah. That part's out of our hands. What is in our hands is showing up and doing our best to do our best. That's it. The world will turn the way that it does. That's the recovery part, right? Acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. Perspective. Wow. I'm so grateful that this is my biggest problem today. Right? Get yeah, rid of your right. piano. Thank you for the reminder. I, yeah. need, I need that. Not sewing somebody's foot back on. No. Right? Perhaps losing my foot. It's a piano. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to share about chaos and perspective? So we have some new people in the room. And so anytime, I'm going to go around and call everybody out. But anytime you want to speak, um, please speak. 
If anyone's got something to share, I know that we're all at different places on our recovery. So if anyone's got anything to share, um, please share. Okay? I'll share. Thank you. Hi, Liz. Hello. Um, about chaos and perspective. So this week um, I had a meeting with uh, um, some, some of my coworkers and other managers and um, just wanted to bring an issue to light and um, talk about the possible risks and what it means for the company. And um, there were two people in that meeting that immediately took it very personal and felt like they were being attacked. And that wasn't the case at all. But um, it was interesting because I could see them physically get uncomfortable <laughs> and emotionally react. And I used to be in that seat. And now I'm not. I'm I'm calm and I can kind of look at it more logically and speak calmly and kind of bring them back, um, bring them down a little bit and help them see that it's not, you know, a personal attack, that it's just, um, you know, it's just business and we need to look at the facts and figure out how to fix it. So that was good. That was awesome. Liz, were you like that six months ago? No, absolutely no. not. Yeah. You did a lot of recovery <laughs> work, right? Yes. Right. Don't take it personally, guys. Everybody read the four agreements. Don't take it personally, man. Everything that's happening ain't about you. You know, when we talked about, when they talk about um, addicts being self-centered, doesn't mean that we're selfish, right? I was great. I got loaded and wrote checks and brought pool tables and bought people things. And I was a great drunk. You know, I wasn't one of those mean drunks, by the way. I was like super cool and super nice, I, I thought. But anyway, but self-centered, meaning that my addiction is the center of everybody's universe and what I need and what I want and me taking everything personally because what you have to say today is certainly about me. And what you're just talking about, well, you're really just saying that because, you know, I said something the other day and so you're probably just trying to put it in my face. And if I say this, she's probably not going to like it. It ain't about that, right? You were talking about some facts, about what was going on, and... For sure, six months ago, if somebody would have said that and it was about something that you were doing, we'd be having a different conversation. Right. Right. You've done shit tons of work, mm -hmm. a whole lot of work, to change your perspective on that, right? And to know that, that that is what it is. Right. And also, I would have joined in on their chaos and taken it personal that they were taking it personal, if that makes sense. Right. Codependence yeah. at its finest. We love codependence, yeah. right? And Angela yeah. hasn't even spoken up to defend you yet, so that's good, Ange. <laughs> so no codependence yet from the side of the room either. Usually Laura and Angela are, are pretty good with each other about that. <laughs> oh, Karen too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for you. And that's a super big step for you. So I'm really proud of you. And importantly, too, that you can see it now. Not judge others. But see, like, hey, this is what's going on. I don't need to be a part of it. Right. Right? I don't need to dip my toe in the chaos pool today. Right? Just for it just to be what it is. And that other, I don't have to take on Bonnie's crazy today. Right? Then I could look at Bonnie and say, wow, I really hope that she has a better day because she's going through something right now. Right? Everybody get that? It ain't always about us. Very often, it ain't about us at all. It's about other people living their life and having a life experience, right? That doesn't have to do with us, and we don't have to take it personally. We got that? I got everybody up there, right? Yeah. So we're going to go um, around. Yes. Jess wants to share. She wrote Jess? Oh, us. hi, Jess. Okay, so Jess says, Oh, Jess, hi. I'll share this way. LOL. <laughs> I went to a Christmas party last night and getting kind of dressy and cute last night made me remember my nights of going out. Um, oh, going out using, which at first was kind of an I miss that feeling, but last night was a much safer night than those nights from the past, and I'm grateful to be where I am today. Thank you for putting that up. And, and you remember that you went out last night, so that's good. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> You didn't have to write yourself notes. Do you guys, any of our drunks in here ever write themselves notes or when you're high, write yourself a note so that you remember, like, have an idea of what happened? And they're like, oh, no. Well, I'm a worse addict than the rest of you, so I have done that for sure. So, yeah. Um, you had fun? 
<laughs> yeah, Jess also used to take everything personally. Shake your head, Jess, because I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you knew. And so, uh, that you can hear me. And um, remember that time where you went out to dinner? I remember the story. You went out to dinner, and then the people that knew you at the other table didn't say hello to you, and you were all up in arms about it, and what did you do wrong, and how... And you had lost so much weight that they just didn't friggin' recognize you, <laughs> which is what the, really the story was we found out, right? And you took it personally until you found out difference. And it wasn't about you. And that was a really good story to share because it shows us that we walk around in our heads so much. Right? Okay, well, she's going to continue to shake her head. Love you. <laughs> we miss you. So thanks for being here with us today. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Good, good. Do you feel like saying your name? You don't have yeah, to. Yeah, I'm Ruben. Hi, Ruben. Yeah. <laughs> How are you this morning? Very Anything good. you want to share? Nothing. I mean, I'm here to, um, exploring something new. Okay. I'm seeing, um, I've been in 12 Steps for a very long time. For okay. about eight or nine years now. Um, Do you mind if I ask what your drug of choice is? Doesn't matter. Oh, what your behavior of choice? Uh, food, yes. Food, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm maintaining about a 300 pound weight loss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I used to be a very big guy. And uh, yeah, you know, just looking, I mean, just exploring new things. Really, that's my name. Well, thank you so much for being here. And really? then, um, like I said, somebody shares and then we share. So if you have anything to say, that would be great. How long have you been in um, in 12-step program? About nine years. Yeah. yeah. Eight, nine years in April, yeah. So we're not affiliated with the 12-step programs. You guys shout out to every one of them. They're amazing. People get clean there. We love, I was in OA and, uh, not in OA, I'm sorry, in AA and in NA, and um, I got clean there. So thank you for everybody that participates in those meetings. We're not affiliated with them, but they're awesome. So thank you, gratitude for those. And um, yeah, so you have a lot of recovery experience. So if there's anything that you could share, that would be awesome, because we all share here. So sure. thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you, Ruben. Hi, my name is Samantha. Ruben's my husband. Hi, Samantha. Um, <laughs> my, my drug of choice, definitely food, but I'm in recovery from alcoholism, pills, drugs, right. food, cigarettes, everything. Um, I've been sober for, my mind's going blank because I'm anxious. Um, I yeah, I have a couple of years abstinence. Well, I have six years abstinence from sugar and flour, and April will be two years absent from my food addiction from the overeating. Um, and I have so two years you have clean from everything. Well, I have six years clean from alcohol. So we don't differentiate them. Because oh, okay, for good. me, I have yeah. I have over ten years clean from alcohol. Okay. So if I could wipe away the Percocet. I'd have 10 years clean instead of three and a half years clean or, or I mean, two and a half years clean. So we lump them all together because I don't think that one's better or worse than the other. And Thank if you, I starve yeah. myself I for agree. the next month, I'm not clean. So that's just the way that I we agree. look at it here because we got to. No, I appreciate that because I, I agree 100%. Um, so, but I had a glass of wine the other day and um, it's interesting because I, I do want to share one thing because I've been feeling resentful about it. So I went to an AA meeting, a AA woman's meeting, and one woman shared, well, you know, I, I'll do whatever I, I need to do to stay sober. She's like, even if I have to go home and binge on whatever and sleep all day, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'll, you know, whatever I have to, and I, and I just felt so resentful. Yeah. I felt so resentful because I was like, why do I have to be a food addict and an alcoholic. Why can't I just be one or the other so I can, like you said, partake in this or that? So, so here's the thing. Again, yeah. we always talk about um, coming from a place of abundance instead of a place of lack. And we talk about how jealousy is counting somebody else's blessings instead of our own, right? And how what she's doing is none of our business. So she ain't keeping me clean and she's not keeping you clean. Right, and what she does is about her, and the way that you view the world and what you do for yourself is about you, right? So she could do whatever she wants to do. Does she have a problem as a binger or a purger or a? I don't want to say who cares, but that's her business, not yours. As far as you being resentful, I can't.